I love a good cup of tea. I love a good scone. I'm pretty partial to finger sandwiches, biscuits, macarons, lemon curd, clotted cream, basically anything you can find at a traditional afternoon tea service. So when I heard that a local fancy hotel had started its own afternoon tea event, I was extremely excited to check it out before I saw its price tag. I do understand that afternoon tea has a lot of moving parts. There's the various baked goods that can take different techniques. There's jams, curds, creams, possibly soups or salads. And of course, having a variety of hopefully high quality tea, it makes sense that it costs more than a typical lunch. I've been known to splurge $60 on an excellent afternoon tea service, but in my experience, I should be paying closer to $35. The ticket for this afternoon tea was $72, which is almost certainly the most expensive afternoon tea I've ever been to. But I'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt. Like I said, this is a very fancy hotel and they're considering their afternoon tea a special event. So maybe I'd be experiencing an incredibly delectable afternoon tea in a beautiful location. I thought, why not? Let's give it a go and I can bring you along and share the experience. So I went ahead and made a reservation for afternoon tea for three. My favorite part of Cedar and Elm's afternoon tea service was the ambiance. There were limited tickets available for their afternoon tea, which meant that there wasn't too much noise from other patrons, and the live musician, Jennifer Ray, was excellent. I'll put a link to her channel below. Her voice was lovely, her song choice was on point, and the way she set up her sound system meant that even though we were right next to her, the music wasn't too loud at all. The high ceilings and the big open windows that looked over St. Edward State Park were gorgeous. The food offerings were colorful, the dishware was delicately designed, and when we sat down, the entire tea service was already there waiting for us. The staff was very friendly and walked the balance between being attentive and letting us enjoy the experience. In short, everything looked and felt beautiful and luxurious. There are two main categories of food in an afternoon tea service. The savory, usually comprised of tea sandwiches and maybe a soup or salad, and the sweet, which usually includes a scone, cream, clotted or Devonshire, jam, and hopefully a pastry or two. In my opinion, a good tea service should have the savory and the sweet be balanced. Otherwise, it is incredibly easy to get a sugar high and not feel well enough to finish your service. Not that anyone should ever feel obligated to finish all their food, but for me personally, I don't want to feel like I needed to go back. I want the tea service to be well planned. In terms of balance, cedar and elm did not pass. There were many more sweet offerings than savory, which again is a common mistake. So when we left, it was with a cheesecake slice, a carrot cake slice, some macarons, two scones, and a crumpet. But despite this imbalance, the food was generally very tasty. The open-faced sandwiches in particular had wonderful flavors and textures. The standard smoked salmon was paired with onion jam and roasted red peppers to delectable effect. The cucumber was paired with an herb mascarpone instead of cream cheese, and the deviled eggs were made purple and almost sweet with the addition of beet juice. On the sweet side of things, banana pudding inspired cheesecake was very tasty and had a nice creamy texture. The carrot cake was great, according to Rose and James, since I skipped mine in favor of the scone. The macarons were tasty and the brownies were chewy. It was all good, there was nothing wrong, but nothing exceptional. Although, to my fascination, there was what I believe to be a real crumpet. So it's a very plain flavor, and it's like much bouncier than I would expect. I always thought crumpets were English muffins. I don't know if this is like authentic or anything. But yeah, it's almost eggy. It's interesting, it's tasty. I see it being a good base for like jams and stuff. Okay, I'll talk about the scone now. You know I have a little series on YouTube where I'm trying to create the perfect scone. I do understand the difficulties and the pitfalls. That being said, this was the worst scone I've ever had. 
It was covered in granulated sugar, almost like it was a donut. I've never seen anything like that before, and now that I think back, it could have been a bad batch and the baker was trying to cover up just how overbaked the scone was. The outside was crunchy, the inside was dry, and there was a distinct lack of butteriness or flakiness. And with everything else being pretty good quality, the scones, which in my opinion are a quintessential part of the afternoon tea experience, really stood out as being subpar. And there was no clotted cream or even butter, which was a disappointment anyway, but that is the exact sort of thing that can usually save a disappointing scone. Let's talk about the main event, the tea. Some tea rooms that I've been to have their own tea brands and blends, which is always fun and interesting. Some have hundreds of different varietals to choose from, which means I always get to try something new. But since this afternoon tea was a special event at a hotel restaurant, I completely understand them having a limited menu from a supplier. Honestly, I was a bit concerned that we'd end up with a subpar tea experience with bagged tea or loose leaf that was oversteeped. Neither of these happened. In fact, it was a very unique experience on the tea side of things. Each tea was a single serving. We'd order what tea we each wanted and would receive a strainer filled with that tea. The teapot we were given had water in it, heated to between 190 and 200 degrees, ideal for steeping herbals, black tea, white tea, and oolong, but not green tea. Of course, the water would cool as it sat on the table, and I believe we got it refreshed once in the two hour period, although they would have refilled it for us as many times as we wanted. We would then steep the tea ourselves, but we're not given a timer or an indication of how long that should be. I chose to let my tea steep the length of a song because that's about three minutes and that's about what I do at home, but it would be easy to forget and let it oversteep. Of course, I'm very sensitive to bitterness, so that's more of a problem for me than it is for others. The benefit of this single serving tea situation is that you could try as many different teas as you wanted. You could re-steep your tea without getting too much additional caffeine. You were the master of your own tea destiny. If you know you want a weaker or a stronger brew, you get that. For me, personally, I didn't really care for this. I'd rather relax pouring out cup after cup of tea with a consistent flavor. I usually trust afternoon tea places to brew the tea properly without bitterness, but that's a personal preference. Rose and James enjoy being able to try a couple of the tea varieties. The afternoon tea service at Cedar and Elm was very nice. The ambience was off the charts, the food was interesting, and a bit elevated from the expected afternoon tea menu. The tea was above average for a restaurant and had the interesting aspect of being able to sample multiple teas. That being said, I would not do this again at its current price point. I would be comfortable paying maybe $60 considering the beautiful location, paying the musician, and assuming that the scone situation was a fluke. And I hope that Cedar and Elm continues this event, maybe getting enough interest to make it a regular meal option with different tiers of tea service. I can easily imagine bringing my friends and we each have tea and a better baked scone with maybe one open faced sandwich, or three people could share two tea services and instead of the currently imposed $70 per person. I do always think the more afternoon tea places, the better. So since this is a relatively new thing, on the off chance that someone at Cedar and Elm sees this review, I hope they think about playing with their afternoon tea service and making it even better. If you're in the Pacific Northwest and decide to check out Cedar and Elm, at least while they still have their tea service, please let me know. Especially if your scones were better than mine, I'm very curious about what happened there. If you know of any other afternoon tea places, please do comment below and I'll see you next time. Cheers! <laughs>